People keep telling me I've got this terrible phobia, this Islamophobia that's going around, and it's getting me down. I feel like a plague carrier. So I went to the doctor for a cure. And she was a bit taken aback. She said, I don't know what to suggest for that. Maybe grow a beard and start wearing pyjamas? In fairness, I think she was being facetious. Otherwise, of course, I would have had to pull her up on that remark, call her a racist, and take legal action to have her struck off. In the event, I said, is there nothing you can do for me, Doc? She said, don't be ridiculous. There's no such condition. It's all in your head. I said, are you saying I'm a hypochondriac? She said, I suppose you are in a way, and I'd like to help you with that, but I'm out of placebos. And I thought, well, that's just great. It's precisely at crisis points like this in life that a person really needs a placebo. Luckily, I managed to find an emergency homeopath and got a couple of sugar pills, which I'm hoping will do the trick. If not, I'll have to go hardcore with reflexology, maybe even get my aura red. Or I may just go with the beard and pyjamas, as recommended, but only if it isn't racist. Now, I should point out at this stage that I didn't really go to the doctor. I just made that up. And I say this because I know from my correspondence that there will be people already trying to find out her name so they can have her prosecuted for racism. So you can calm down, folks. It didn't really happen. It was just a joke. And that's rather appropriate because Islamophobia is also a joke and a pretty sick and tasteless one at that. You know, for a, quite a while now here in Britain, we've been hearing these very disturbing stories about a wave of attacks on Muslims and this tsunami of Islamophobia that's sweeping the land. All the papers have been talking about it, even foreign ones have got in on the act. But I can't help noticing that they all seem to get the story from the same discredited source, a notorious Muslim activist organisation whose statistics were shown to be so unreliable and biased in the wake of the Woolwich murder that they had their public money withdrawn. The media know full well that these people have a vested interest in keeping the myth of Islamophobia alive, yet they still reproduce everything they're given verbatim, as if it's the truth. Presumably because it's convenient, unlike the truth, which can often be inconvenient. Like, for example, the fact that most of these so-called attacks on Muslims turned out to be merely insults, many of them on the internet. Yeah, tell me about it. Boo-hoo. Poor you. In reality, the cure for Islamophobia is quite simple. It's for people who should know better, and who do know better, to stop parroting the propaganda, because we've all seen through it now. Everyone knows this word was deliberately invented just a few years ago for the express purpose of giving backward Islamic values traction in a society where they're not welcome and they don't belong. We know it doesn't describe a real phenomenon, and that it's simply a crude attempt to impose a de facto blasphemy law on non-Muslims to stigmatise critics of Islamic supremacism falsely as racists, and to shut them up. It isn't working, and it will never work, because the word has been so widely exposed as a statistically provable lie that the only people it stigmatises are the liars who still use it. If you use this word, you effectively contaminate the integrity of all your opinions, because everyone can see that you're using it in the full knowledge that it is a lie, and that therefore you have a dishonest mind that can't be trusted. A mind so at odds with reality, in fact, that maybe you're the one who should see a doctor.